Just a mention of the name Mali conjures up images of an ancient empire central to the trans-Saharan gold trade of yore and where exotic cities like Timbuktu live on, not just in legend. But Mali is also a modern African state, competing for its place in the world economy, its towns and cities facing the universal pressures of rapid urbanization. Bamako is the capital of this West African nation. The city stands astride the majestic River Niger. Numerous canals linked to the river traverse the land, presenting an image of plenty and belying the fact that the country wrestles with the challenge of providing clean, safe water to its urban poor. When you have very many priorities, you are forced to carefully allocate the resources that you have. In the case of Mali, we put special emphasis on access to drinking water and sanitation. In most of the projects financed by our development partners, the government also makes a contribution. UN Habitat, under the Water for African Cities program, has partnered with the government of Mali and a number of non-governmental organizations to address the urban water crisis. The main strategic uh, implementation focus is on demonstrating uh, uh, pilot uh, activities in the country and using that as a learning uh, tool where we feed into bigger scale projects. The Water for African Cities program is part of UN Habitat's wider efforts to meet the Millennium Development Goal target of halving the number of people without access to safe water and sanitation by 2015. The program appreciates the wisdom of targeting the next generation and aims to create a new water use ethic among school children and by extension the wider communities. This is being done through an innovative school and community curriculum called value-based water education. At Point G School in Bamako, good hygiene practices like hand washing have been introduced. Colourful murals adorn the walls of new facilities constructed through the programme, reinforcing the good hygiene message. You have a water closet for girls and water closet for boys. They relieve themselves in, uh, in the school year instead of going uh, in, in uh, neighbouring families. In each classroom, you have dustbin. So, when a student use uh, the papers, they can leave these papers in the dustbin. At the Jean Richard School and other selected schools, special water classrooms have been set up where pupils follow a unique curriculum on water and the environment. Same Kuluninko is an informal settlement on the outskirts of Bamako. The area is crisscrossed by flowing channels, which to the casual observer would suggest that potable water exists in abundance here. In Same Kuluninko, Water for African Cities, in collaboration with the local municipality, has rehabilitated 17 hand pumps, which now serve up to 6,000 people a day. Before we had to get up at 3 a.m. to look for water, and also our children used to suffer a lot from diarrhea. Now all that has changed. One of the most important aspects of these interventions is that they be owned and managed by the respective communities and that they be sustainable. In Same Kuluninko, the pump operators have been trained to manage and maintain the facilities. Each user pays a fee to the operator, which goes towards maintenance of the pump. Kalabambugu is a neighborhood in the southwest part of Bamako city. The majority of the population is extremely poor. 
To help raise living standards, the Development Committee of Kalabambugu has introduced the fabrication of cement slabs used in the improvement of latrines in the community. Each slab costs the equivalent of 10 US dollars. They are sold to the local and neighboring communities who purchase the slabs through microcredit schemes. Through this project, our lifestyle has improved very much. Now all the children are no longer dirty as they were before. We also have no bad smells in the compound and our health has improved because wastewater is being managed properly. So we are very happy. 325 kilometers northeast of Bamako, in the Segu region, lies the city of Niono. A 50 kilometer long canal runs through the town and beside it, the main market bustles with activity every Thursday and Sunday. With the growing local population, an influx of traders and a lack of suitable sanitation facilities, the canal has, until recently, come under threat. Residents use the canal for anything from laundry to urination and even open defecation. Through the Water for African Cities program, a modern public toilet complex has been constructed in the marketplace to serve an average of 2,500 people a day. It's a unique intervention in that it incorporates showers, a safe deposit store for luggage, toilets for people with disabilities, and 50 latrines with biodigesters. Biogas production will relieve all the women because here, in Niono, you have to go far, nearly 30 kilometers to get firewood. So the transportation cost and even the pressure on the natural resources like forests will be drastically reduced. The same gas is used for lighting homes. Women are the main beneficiaries. The Water for African Cities program also facilitated the construction of domestic washing bays and low-cost latrines at household level, thus improving the general state of health in the town and promoting good hygiene practices, including hand washing and quality control at water collection points. Bubakan Samake, the chief of Niono, is one of the beneficiaries of an Ecosan latrine. As an opinion leader in the community, he encourages other residents to construct these facilities in their own homes. My children's health has improved, and now we have reduced the cost of fertilizer because we use the waste from the Ecosan latrine as fertilizer. The key to successful implementation of national sanitation policies in Mali is collaboration with the development partners. I would like to urge UN Habitat to act as a sort of interface with all the partners who are able to assist the Malian population to get access to sanitation services. As African cities increasingly act as engines of growth, the continent's population will continue to migrate to urban centers. The demands on governments to provide adequate sanitation and water supply will continue to rise, putting enormous pressure on resources and leaving the leadership playing catch-up to the citizens' needs. Initiatives like the Water for African Cities program play a vital role in bridging the demand gap to ensure sustainable access to proper sanitation and safe drinking water, not just for the affluent in society, but focusing on the urban poor. Through pro-poor governance, the Water for African Cities program continues to leave a tangible impact on the lives of the underprivileged, giving them a lifeline to a better future.